Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I've got big news to share with you guys, very important news that you should know as a crypto investor. We're going to talk about the Tether Bitfinex New York District Attorney settlement in that respective lawsuit and what that means for Bitcoin moving forward. We're also going to talk about Square has bought more Bitcoin to put on their balance sheet. In addition, a Bitcoin miner is looking to go public and they are the ones building the world's largest Bitcoin mining farm in Texas. Also, there's an update around the SEC Ripple XRP lawsuit that I want to share with you guys. Before we break it down, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel, and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, heads up, tomorrow I am interviewing Anthony Scaramucci. You don't want to miss that one. Make sure you have the notification bell enabled. So, Bitcoin and the crypto market is currently in a correction. Comes as no surprise, because if you've been following Following this channel, we've talked about a correction that was in the works, guys, because we were in another parabolic cycle where we ran up from your respective $32,000 all the way up to $58,000. I thought we could go to 60 and then see a correction, but it happened at $58,000. And as you can see here, it's going to build the support levels and then we work our way back up. You know, remember what I've been talking about for the past few weeks, the same way we had a run up from 20,000 to 42,000 back from uh, December to January, then we had a correction the same way we're seeing that correction now market cycles and the next target you know according to max kaiser here he's thinking seventy seven thousand dollars that makes sense to me with this correction we have another twenty something thousand dollar move here and we hit the 70s and then we'll see probably see another correction and then go up to a hundred so remember that zoom out when in doubt guys you have to understand the market cycles these things are healthy and they have played out over time so here's a tweet from bitcoin archive corrections are normal here's some statistics in the last bull market of 2017 we had nine dips between 20 to 40 percent and gains uh, 1k to 20k in 2017 that's 20x the previous all-time high we are now sitting on a 2.35x the previous previous cycle all-time high of 20k and we're just getting started so if you can see here on this macro level chart corrections on the way up some near 40 percent so keep that in mind you will have these healthy corrections in a bull market but i always point you guys to the macro level charts like the stock to flow model which is on track so these dips don't even register on the stock to flow model. As you can see the color coded movement of the Bitcoin price here, and it's because of the mathematical algorithmic, uh, uh, excuse me, a ma mathematical algorithm that's built into the Bitcoin blockchain of the halving that takes place every four years, cut in supply, and you have the supply and demand economics at play, and you see the higher prices as a result. And of course, we have record-breaking money printing now, which is driving more demand for Bitcoin and other cryptos. So we're on track. Hope you guys understand what's happening. That's why I share these charts with you. That's why I've been talking about the corrections that are coming. I try to give you guys heads up. Nothing goes up in a straight line. Now, the big news of the day, New York Attorney General's $850 million probe of Bit Bitfinex tether ends in an $18.5 million settlement. In a closely watched case with wide-ranging implications for the crypto market, Tether has admitted no wrongdoing and will provide reports on USDT's reserve composition for two years. So they have come to a settlement that is good news. Now, there have been people who try to emphasize this more than what it is. While it was an element of concern, and I certainly had an a, element of concern about this, but I didn't see it as some big thing because Tether is just a small part of Bitcoin's volume. And it wasn't all of their respective um, uh, treasury that was not backed, so to speak. So the, the investigation is almost a little bit inconclusive because Tether is saying one thing and Bitfinex is saying one thing while the New York St Attorney General is saying, yes, they didn't have have a hundred percent backing at all times but apparently um it wasn't something significant where hey they had less than 30 percent backing i think they were probably about uh, 80 to 85 percent now 
Obviously, that's not good. You, you're supposed to be at 100%. But what I'm saying, this is not a big issue as the Bitcoin haters like you know, Noriel Robini and the other maximalists in the crypto market would have you to believe. So I'm glad this has been sorted out. You guys know in my interviews, I've been talking to people about it. I specifically asked one of the biggest Bitcoin bulls in the world, Michael Saylor, what does he think about it? And he was like, this is nothing. Okay, so if Tether goes away, that's not going to stop Bitcoin's momentum. Uh, Bitcoin's bigger than Tether. So the long story short, without going through everything here, this is settled. Tether will be closely monitored. Um, they are apparently banned in New York. That's one of the outcomes, which is weird. But New York has strict laws, as we know, bit, uh, bit licenses and all those things. So... That's where we're at, and this is good news. And in fact, we had some people in the market weigh in. So billionaire Mike Novogratz, founder of uh, Galaxy Digital, he tweeted the following. This is very positive for the crypto community. Removing Tether FUD is a big positive. Many Wall Street banks pay fines and move on. That is absolutely true. Hoping both Tether and Bitfinex grows its contribution to crypto liquidity now that the cloud has been lifted. So Big cloud has been lifted. And in addition, uh, Travis Kling weighed in. And he said the following, the removal of Tether risk in its entirety is not just about what Bitcoin's price will do today or tomorrow. This was a massive risk for institutional capital. JP Morgan dedicated an entire section to Tether risk in a recent report. This is a step change in institutional investability. So now you have one of the major doubts or risks that you know a lot of investors were looking at because you got guys like Peter Schiff, Noriel Romini going on TV saying, oh yeah, Bitcoin just pumped up because of Tether, when that is not the it, 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 true. Bitcoin is to a degree pumped by Tether, but it's being bought up by record-breaking demand from institutional investors and like you know, the likes of Grayscale and so on and so forth. So sometimes people give you half the truths and they emphasize the, the ones they want you to see, the negative, so they can paint a negative fo uh, picture of this. And, and the people who don't like Bitcoin do that. But as always, I keep it holistic with you guys, 360 view, right? I was, of course, concerned about this, like I said, but the fact that this has been settled, this is going to bring in more capital into the market. And we're going to see Bitcoin take off to new all-time highs. And of course, like I always say, Bitcoin is the rising tide that lifts all boats. The alts will follow. We'll have alt season. So the entire market would benefit from this, guys. And my point of people buying up Bitcoin, here's an example. Square announced today it has purchased around 3,318 uh, Bitcoins at an aggregate purchase price of $170 million combined with Square's previous purchase of $50 million in Bitcoin. This represents around 5% of total cash cash equivalents and marketable securities as of December 31st, 2020. Very bullish, my friends. Very, very bullish. Jack Dorsey, we know, is a Bitcoin bull. This man is doing as much as he can to, to, to get Bitcoin adoption around the globe. We know him and Jay-Z, the hip-hop artist, uh, just recently created a Bitcoin fund for India and Africa, or countries in Africa, I should say. And uh, it's I think it included 500 Bitcoins. So he's trying to do as much as he can. I think he's running a Bitcoin node right now. And Square, um, like Tesla and MicroStrategy and all these companies, are putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet. So very bullish. And they bought the respective Bitcoin at uh, the $50,000 mark. Now, some of you are going to be like, what? $50,000? That doesn't sound like buying the dip or getting the lows. But remember, these guys are not looking short term. They're not just looking 2021. They're looking 2021 and beyond the next halvings. They're going to be holding Bitcoin long term. So some of us I know are looking for that $100,000 price, uh, price point to cash out. They're looking beyond that. And I hope you guys understand what's happening here. So uh, we could see Twitter do that next. We know Jack, of course, right? A founder of Twitter. And uh, he, he, we could see uh, Bitcoin be added to Twitter's balance sheet and other tech companies following suit. So big, big adoption endorsement of Bitcoin here. That's why I hold it in my portfolio along with other cryptos. Now, speaking of bullish Bitcoin news, Bitcoin mining firm Northern Data plans US listing to raise $500 million. The German base excuse me, the Germany-based firm owns the world's largest cryptocurrency mining facility in Rockdale, Texas. 
We've been talking about this for years, guys, on this channel. You're going to see global macroeconomic battle for the control of Bitcoin's hash rate. I've made videos about this two years ago, and it's going to happen between the U.S. and China and other countries, Russia as well. Uh, about a month ago or a couple of weeks ago, we reported on uh, 20,000 mining units being shipped to Siberia. So Russia is looking to take a big uh, stronghold here. And like I said, it's going to be a, a competitive thing. They're, this is game theory, right? Um, if you understand that. So the Northern Data is in talks with Credit Suisse over the listing, which could take place later this year, according to a Bloomberg report on Tuesday, citing people familiar with the matter. The Frankfurt headquartered firm owns, among others, the world's largest crypto mining facility in Rockdale, Texas, which has a planned capacity of one gigawatt by the end of 2021. So it's still being built and it should be completed this year. Northern Data is already listed on the Deutsche Bourse's uh, extra trading, if I'm saying that right, venue under the ticker NB2. Shareholders include Cryptology Asset Group, the investment company backed by Mike Novogratz and Block One. So guys, why are they looking to go public and raise money this year? Well, we're in a bull market and if Bitcoin's price and the price of other cryptos are up, that increases your valuation. That is why Coinbase is looking to do an IPO very soon. And you know they're not going to do an IPO in the bear market. They're going to do it in the bull market when new prices, all-time highs are coming, right? Logic would tell you that. So Big things are ahead. Bitcoin's not going anywhere. It's here to stay. Uh, so all the haters, uh, you're going to have to come up with new FUD. You're going to have to come up with new excuses. Good luck. Um, it's getting institutional mainstream adoption here. And Bitwise, I just recently interviewed uh, the chief investment officer at Bitwise, Matt Hogan. If you haven't seen that interview, check it out. They now have 1 billion in assets under management across their respective funds. And if you saw my interview with Matt, they have a Bitcoin and Ethereum fund. They have a top 10 crypto index fund, which includes uh, all coins, Chainlink, and so on and so forth. So the competition is heating up. They're looking to, of course, steal business from uh, Grayscale. And likewise, uh, I believe it's BlockFi. They also started a crypto trust, uh, Bitcoin trust. So the competition's heating up and these folks are seeing record-breaking inflows. Now, finally, I want to talk to you guys about um, uh, Ripple and the SEC lawsuit and some updates here, which in the pre-trial conference that took place, um, it just it, I think it was Monday, yes, yesterday, um, there were some interesting takeaways. And I, I've been on record, I made quite a few videos on this where I do believe the SEC does not have a strong case and they're going to get exposed. And the way they handled it with Jay Clayton gone, him and his cronies and enforcers gone, um, and, and with Gary Gensler coming in, I think we're going to see this lawsuit probably get thrown out or some settlement or something. But I, I think Ripple is in the in a great position at this point. I know saying that a company being sued by the SEC being in a great position, well, great position to win this lawsuit, I should say. So during uh, yesterday's pre-trial conference, between Ripple and the SEC, both parties laid out their position with one bombshell and while one bombshell was revealed. In 2019, the SEC did not answer yes to an anonymous exchange's inquiry about whether XRP is a security. Long story short, an exchange asked the SEC, should we participate or work with XRP or list XRP? Is it a security? The SEC did not answer. So they were questioned by market makers and exchanges, and they did not give a clear answer. And uh, lawyer Jeremy Hogan, who has a YouTube channel, I've, I've talked about him before, you know, broke it down. I think this is one of those smoking gun items. Um, you uh, were asked, and you did not, you, you know, you didn't give clear regulations. This goes back to where were you in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017 in the bull market? You didn't do anything. You sat on your laurels um, on the way out of Jake Lane on the way out, dropped this bombshell. And um, XRP is not a security right now. It's more decentralized than ever. In the beginning, I think it was in the way it was issued. And Ripple should pay a fine for that. But you can't say XRP is a security now, right? And that is, you know, what they're trying to argue. And there's so many things against them right now because they didn't say anything for years. Uh, the FinCEN had ruled XRP a virtual currency. So Ripple was operating under that uh, premise. And here, here's an example of what Jeremy had to say. Now, that is a big problem for the SEC. And I don't know how to get around it because 
what changed between these uh wait actually let me back up here for you guys um okay it got most interesting at the end, though. Ripple revealed that in 2019, the SEC was approached by a major crypto exchange or maybe multiple exchanges and asked, Hey, SEC, can we sell XRP or is it a security? Please let us know. And the SEC didn't tell them no, Hogan reported. Now, that is a big problem for the SEC, and I don't know how they get around that because what changed between 2019 and December uh, 2020? This little piece was found during the initial pre-trial discovery by Ripple, and it is huge. There will likely be excuse me, there will, will be likely discovery disputes about this very issue as the SEC tries to hide and Ripple finds the details and what led the SEC to continue allowing exchanges to sell XRP. So they did not stop this for years. And all of a sudden, you go and you drop this sucker punch move. Uh, once again, Jay Clayton on the way out. Uh, so guys, I think Ripple has some strong arguments here. And remember, this is being put before a judge Who's going to look at the situation and say, well, you didn't do anything for years. You did not stop this. And XRP is now in secondary markets and it's now out of the control of Ripple. And um, you didn't stop exchanges when they asked you, what were you guys doing? Right. And and where were you when the FinCEN ruled that it was a virtual currency? That among many other things. Right, guys. So um, that is why I still hold my XRP. I'm still bullish on it and what Ripple is trying to do. Obviously, right now, not performing well. Obviously, it goes without saying with the um, lawsuit, but I think Ripple's in a great spot. And this also, um, as I've stated many times, will be uh, a groundbreaking and set the precedence for what's going to happen for the other cryptos in the market. Because remember, this this is just Ripple and XRP, but there's, oh, there's what, over 2,000 other cryptos, some who probably launched and started the same way as Ripple. So there's going to be a lot of things that need to be sorted out here. And I think if Ripple wins this case, um, I think we're going to see some clear regulations and, and we'll know how to move forward. But I'm bullish on, on XRP. I know some of you are probably like, dude, are you crazy? This is based on my own research. You don't have to listen to me. I'm not a financial or investment advisor. I'm just going off of my research and from the folks I've interviewed, guys. I've interviewed, um, obviously, Greg Kidd, an investor in Ripple, um, a former SEC official. I've spoken to employees at Ripple. And I will be interviewing Hester Pierce, commissioner of the SEC, very soon. That interview is being scheduled right now, guys. So stay tuned for more interviews and great content on that front. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment below. Hit the subscribe button. And I will talk to you guys later. Mm -hmm.